It's a time warp without parallel. You walk into Scott's hut and you are transported to the year 1912 in a way that is quite impossible anywhere else in the world. Everything is there. Commercial product, tin food, clothing, the bench where Wilson conducted his scientific experiments with the glass test tubes and so on. The bunks, the table. Outside the hut, there are the bodies of the emperor penguins, which the expedition were examining. And there's no dust. When I go into the hut, what I'm reminded of is, I guess, how different it was during Scott's expedition. They had a lot of light in the hut, there was the stove going, there would have been mutton stew boiling away, there was fresh bread making. Now the hut is very dark, it's very cold inside, and everything is very quiet, which is not what it would have been like during Scott's time. The objects that they left behind really are a tangible reminder of what they had to go through. I pick up something like the boots that Robert Falcon Scott wore. Worn down, the laces don't do up anymore, they've got dents in them from the straps of his skis, they've got cracks all around them from when the boots froze, and you really get the impression of just how hard they worked, really pushing the boundaries of human endurance. Scott's hut at Cape Evans is truly unlike any of the other historic huts. It has an aura about it, a feel of sadness about it that doesn't exist at the other huts. Everyone understands there's an overlying tragedy there. They go in being familiar with that tragedy and when they get there it really becomes real. This is where they set off from. This is where they did not return to.